Ah, oh, okay. So we're sort of continuing this theme for this month of uh, dancing with opposites, sort of, um, you know, finding our way with paradox, the, the paradise of paradox, maybe. And last week, we kind of started this by looking at how when we're on a spiritual path, um, that in this very, very, very materialistic world, it's difficult enough, right? It's difficult enough to stay centered in our spiritual path in this material world. And, but when we have so many different voices and teachers and gurus and uh, practitioners of this method and that method, sharing ideas and practices and concepts that kind of seem downright contradictory. <clears throat> it can be confusing. So we looked at one common paradox last week, which is this universal idea of surrender. In every spiritual, uh, religious teaching, there is some kind of idea of surrender, all right? And we embrace that here. And then we contrasted that with this idea that we embrace in new thought of our power of will, and which is our power to create as co-creators, our power of choice, right? And we found how these two ideas that appear to be at odds with each other can actually work together to strengthen our spiritual growth. And we did an exercise last week where we brought these ideas together in a way that we could apply it to a specific situation in our lives. And, right, if you were here, you remember, we surrendered the ego voice, the small separated self. We surrendered a painful experience. And that allowed us to open to this higher wisdom of the divine self within us. And then from that place, we called forth our good boldly and confidently in our power pose, right? Did that together. And so today I I'd like to look at another common paradox. And this one kind of, I think people, a lot of people have trouble, you know, reconciling. I know I have. So uh, I've shared with you on many occasions that uh, I began my spiritual journey, my in new thought, pretty early on. I, as a teenager, I started reading Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind. I attended a new thought church when I was growing up in San Diego where they taught us to do affirmative prayer in the Science of Mind method, um, which is very similar. They just call it um, spiritual mind treatment. And so I love doing this, and I wrote it out, and I you know, repeated it several times a day and really got into it and visualizing it, and I had a lot of early success with it. I had, you know, I was just an early manifester. Uh, the first thing I manifested was a, a healing. I was on my way to something that I really wanted to go to, and I came down with a flu, like really bad. And I, I did this spiritual mind treatment, immediately healed this. Uh, I manifested a cute little apartment when I was 19, um, a cute little used sports car, um, just opportunities, boyfriends, you know, but as I was saying last week, a lot of times when we start, we learn to do this in the very beginning. Many of us do it from a place of the ego, from, you know, this egoic sense. And so did I. Not generally from that higher divine wisdom within me, right? But yeah, I was young, so I didn't know better. And, uh, and they taught us to visualize to really visualize the specifics of our intention and to really be specific, really see our heart's desires manifest in exquisite detail, which I did, right? And, and you know, because I'm visual, and a, lot of, a lot of you too are very visual. Visual people have, kind of have a, an easier time with this. And some of you are doing that now, you know, some of you have done it in the past. This is kind of what visualization is all about. It's seeing 
really seeing that desired good, seeing it and feeling it and hearing it and smelling it and uh, getting a sense of it, a feeling it until it becomes real to us, until it becomes real. And, you know, this is our power of imagination, right? One of our 12 powers. We're activating the power of our imagination, which really serves us in this. Again, we are, you know, we are powerful co-creators, and we have the ability to create something new out of this field of limitless possibilities to call forth our heart's desire. Now, as I was talking about last week, this all works better for our ultimate happiness when we release the ego voice, the, the small separated self, and open to that highest divine vision within us, that highest divine wisdom, and allow that to guide our choice. So again, I, I didn't know about that back then, and what happened was, at some point it just stopped working. Like, it wasn't working, I wasn't manifesting anymore particularly the thing that I really wanted. It just wasn't happening. So um, a few years later, I started hearing about this Indian doctor who was kind of coming on to the New Thought scene, and he had written a book, a man by the name of Deepak Chopra. Some of you may have heard. <laughs> He's written I don't know how many books now. But this was in the beginning, and um, I got interested in him. I, was, I read his first book, and then I got a second book on tape, on cassette tape. Remember the cassette tape? Remember we used to have cassette players in the car, we, you know, pop them in. Sometimes they'd work. Sometimes they unspooled and went everywhere. <laughs> so I, and it was The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, which blew me away. And it also confused me because he begins by talking about the importance of setting your intention, setting your goals, writing it down, getting specific, thinking about it, focusing on it, and then bringing it into the gap, right? This beautiful Place. It could be like that clear water at the top of the mountain. When the water's really clear, that's what I, I see, that sort of open, prayerful, meditative place, that fertile soil where we are to plant the seed of our intention. So this is like, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with this. Like, I get this. This makes sense to me. But then, a few chapters later, chapter 6, he talks about the law of detachment, that we are to let go of the outcome of what we are affirming. Just be detached. So somehow, you know, we're to play in this field of detachment and uncertainty. He talks about the wisdom of uncertainty. And I'm like, what? Wait a second, how does that work, right? How do I spend time visualizing my good, being specific about it, writing it down, taking it into the gap, you know, putting it into my prayers and meditations and, you know, getting specific about it, and then be detached, let go of the outcome? It's like, what? How do I trick my mind into letting go of the thing that I really want, my heart's desire that I have been, I've spent so much time visualizing and affirming. Anybody else have a challenge with that? Well, I have to tell you, I, I, have, I have for years. Uh, but I knew that he was on to something. So I um, found out that he was doing a public uh, speaking engagement in Santa Barbara, which was about an hour and a half north of where we were living. So I bought a ticket, and I went up there. This is before he became a superstar. So there were maybe three or 400 people in the audience. 
and he spoke for about an hour, and then he opened it up, and it was mind-blowing, really. I felt like out of my body, kind of, you know, these ideas that were, he was kind of the first to come up with this stuff, you know, that we heard about, that was kind of based in science. Um, so he asked, you know, uh, he was opening up for questions, and don't you know, I had my question ready. And I'm like. <laughs> he finally saw it. He called on me. And I said, Mr. Chopra, I, I love your books. And I love what you're bringing to this. And you know, what you're about is fabulous. But can you help me understand how it is possible to focus on my intentions and write them out and get specific about it, visualize it, take it into meditation, take it into uh, before I go to bed tonight, first thing when I wake up in the morning, like you suggest in the book, and then let go of the outcome. Be detached from that. Let go. Hmm, Mr. Wise Man? Answer me that. I didn't say that last part. <laughs> didn't say that. Um, but so the answer he gave me was, it was a little like, eh, like everybody should know this. It was kind of, it was a little glib, I have to say. And I felt a little dumb. Uh, but then he started talking more about how attachment comes from a place of fear and insecurity. And if we think we need the thing that we're trying to bring into our lives in order to be happy, then we're coming from a poverty consciousness. And that was like, oh, wow, that's a new understanding. Let me look at that. Yeah, OK, that makes sense. But then I'm thinking, well, why affirm at all? Why set our intentions or our goals at all? Why not just learn to live with wherever life is sort of taking us? What about our power of will? Of course, I didn't think to ask that at the time. <laughs> you know. Uh, and actually, he's got a pretty clear explanation in his book, but I, I didn't see it. And he said more, and I didn't hear it. You know, it's sort of just is going here. And, and if you've ever had a, this experience where you have a book um, about something new and you're reading it and, you know, some of the concepts are just woo going over here. And then a few years later, you get that same book and you look at that and you go, oh, my God, how profound. Let me get my highlighter and highlight that. Wow, that's great. Right? That was kind of my experience. Uh, so, I have to say, you know, I kind of lived in this conundrum for more years than I care to admit, until I really started hearing Deepak, or no, not Deepak, uh, Derek Rydell talk about it. Our friend, Derek Rydell, who we've, you know, done book studies, he's joined us for a couple of our online book study groups. And the way he talks about it is that Yes, we want to focus on our intention. We want to sit in, uh, set our intentions and focus on it and be specific, particularly the feeling. We want to feel what it will be like to actually have the thing that, we, that our heart desires. What will it feel like as if we are experiencing it now? and open to the joy of that, and the sense of expansion and abundance, and wow, what does that feel like? And really get in, he has a meditation that kind of gets you into that place. Not because that act has some sort of magic power to manifest. It's because it uplevels our vibration, because it shifts us into that creative energy, that creative field, so that we are literally vibrating with that intention, with our desired good. We're really vibrating with the realization of it, with the realization of that. And so when we come from that place, 
if that's our goal, then that desired good naturally unfolds in our life. And once I began to really understand this, I noticed that happening. And if you have heard him or read him before, you'll notice that he has this affirmation that he does every day, this prayer or affirmation that goes something like, more than I want to fix, control, manipulate, or manifest anything in my world, I want to know the truth that sets me free. I want to know the truth that sets me free. So, yeah, that's what it's about. So Deepak was, you know, he, he was on to something here. Again, not about trying to bring something in that we think that we need, whether it's a specific person or a specific situation, because that's just coming from a consciousness of lack and limitation, because I don't have it, right? Which is exactly what I was doing. That's exactly what I was doing. But instead, we want to shift the consciousness, shift our frequency and vibration into this experience of currently, right now, joy. We are that joy. We are that abundance. We are that higher love, that vibrant well-being. And then, from that place, you know, we open to this pure, this field of pure potentiality, which I think, I, I really kind of prefer that phraseology than this field of uncertainty. M maybe there's something lost in translation there, I don't know, from his original, you know, tradition and Sanskrit or, you know, whatever. Um, it, it makes more sense to me. Anyway, so that's the phraseology. This, the field of pure potentiality. That's what we are opening to. So this week, I went back to the book, and I read that chapter again carefully. Guess what I found? This, where he says, when you get attached, you freeze your desire from that infinite fluidity and flexibility into a rigid framework, which interferes with the whole process of creation. The law of detachment does not interfere with the law of intention and desire, with goal setting. You still have the intention of going in a certain direction. You still have a goal. However, between point A and point B, there are infinite possibilities. With uncertainty factored in, you might change direction at any moment. If you find a higher ideal, or if you find something more exciting, you are also less likely to force solutions on problems, which enables you to stay alert to opportunities. So my guess is that many of you have had an experience where you've set a goal an intention, maybe you're visualizing it, you're focusing on it, you're moving in that direction, and then, whoop, suddenly you see a little path over here. And this one is filled with light. And it's warm, and it's welcoming. And then, right, you go in that direction, and that turns out to be the thing. But you never would have found that if you weren't already moving forward on this path, right? Have you had that experience? So I'd like to do an, an exercise with you now. And if I can have the greeters pass out, it's a little, little stone. And we're going to do a little thing. I want you to hold that stone in your hand while we do this kind of guided process. Thank you. Pat and Joy are going to let you pick a stone. I guess, yeah. And while this is happening, 
bring to mind something that you would like to see manifest in your life. Something that you would like to realize, some greater good, some more expansive experience in your life. Begin to hold it in your hand. You can maybe between both palms or one or maybe hold it to your heart, whatever feels right for you. And begin to allow your awareness to be filled with that idea, that intention, that goal, that greater good. What does that look like? What are you seeing? As if you were there now. As if this had already unfolded in your life. How does that feel? How does that feel? Are you moving differently? Are you seeing different things? Is there more aliveness in your body? Is there more lightness and joy and freedom in your experience? Is there more expansion and abundance in your life? And I want you to infuse this <clears throat> stone that you're holding. Infuse it <coughs> with that vision, with that energy, with that vibration of having. Of having in this moment, that good, your heart's desire, what is your heart desiring? A greater experience in life, some greater good, some peace around something, some guidance around something. Feel what it would feel like to be there now, to have this answer now to experience the joy, the fulfillment. And keep infusing your stone. Really breathe and feel that breath of that intention going into this stone. Feel this stone surrounded by this energy of love, this creative energy. Love is a creative energy. That's the power that moves us forward. So feel the love emanating from this stone. Breathe. Be with that vision for another moment or two. All right, when you're ready, open your eyes. Look at that stone. And I'm going to ask you to take this stone that you've infused with your abundant vision and let it go. Let it go. I'm going to ask you when you're ready to come up and put it in there. We're putting it into that creative field, that letting go of our attachment to the outcome, letting it be. What was that like? Was it easy to let it go? Or was it like a little more difficult? <laughs> After you spent so much time infusing that stone with your heart's desire? Yeah. 
we're opening up to trust, right? We're opening up to trust that this infinite organizing power that creates and guides the entire universe, that we are an expression of. We're trusting that, big trust. And when we do, that absolutely begins to show up in our lives as more joy, more abundance, more well-being, more love, more of those things that our heart truly desires. Letting it go. All right. Thank you for your willingness to do that. <laughs> Namaste. Hi. If this video has inspired you, opened your heart, expanded your consciousness, filled you with hope, empowered you in some way, we encourage you to support what we offer here at Unity Center of Peace by making your donation now. And thank you.